The Hephthalites were a people of Central Asia who were militarily important circa 450 to 560. They were based in Bactria and expanded east to the Tarim Basin, west to Sogdia and south through Afghanistan to northern India. They were a tribal confederation and included both nomadic and settled urban communities. They were part of the four major states known collectively as Zion Zionites or Huna, being preceded by the Kidarites, and succeeded by the Alkan and lastly the Nezik. All of these peoples have often been linked to the Huns who invaded Eastern Europe during the same period, and or have been referred to as Huns, but there is no consensus among scholars about such a connection. The Sveta Huna who invaded northern India are probably the Hephthalites, but the exact relation is not clear. The stronghold of the Hephthalites was Tokaristan on the northern slopes of the Hindu Kush, in what is present-day northeastern Afghanistan. By 479, the Hephthalites had conquered Sogdia and driven the Kidarites westwards, and by 493 they had captured parts of present-day Zungaria and the Tarim Basin in what is now northwest China. They expanded into northwestern India as well. The sources for Hephthalite history are poor and historians' opinions differ. There is no king list and historians are not sure how they arose or what language they spoke. They seem to have called themselves Ebedalo, Ebedalo hence Hephthal, often abbreviated E-flat, Eb a name they wrote in the Bactrian script on some of their coins. The origin of the name, Hephthalites, is unknown, possibly from either a Khotanese word asterisk Hitala meaning, strong, or from postulated Middle Persian asterisk Haftal, the seven. Topic. Territory The Hephthalites formed in Bactria around 450, or sometime before. In 442 their tribes were fighting the Persians. Around 451 they pushed southeast to Gandhara. In 456 a Hephthalite embassy arrived in China. By 458 they were strong enough to intervene in Persia. Around 466 they probably took Transoxianan lands from the Kidarites with Persian help but soon took from Persia the area of Balkh and eastern Kushanshar. In the second half of the 5th century they controlled the deserts of Turkmenistan as far as the Caspian Sea and possibly Merv. By 500 they held the whole of Bactria and the Pamirs and parts of Afghanistan. Probably in the late 5th century they took the western Tarim Basin Kashgar and, Khotan, and in 479 they took the east end Turfan. In 497 to 509, they pushed north of Turfan to the Urumqi region. In 509 they took Sughd the capital of Sogdiana. Around 565 their empire was destroyed by an alliance of the Gokturks and the Sasanians, but some of them remained as local rulers in the Afghan region for the next 150 years. History Fifth century, conflicts and alliances with the Sasanians The most reliable information comes from Persian sources, from 442, Yazdegerd II 435 fought tribes of the Hephthalites, according to the Armenian Elisi Vardabd. In 453, Yazdegerd moved his court east to deal with the Hephthalites or related groups. Support of Peraz I, then war in 458, a Hephthalite king called Kushnavaz helped Sasanian Emperor Peraz I gain the Persian throne from his brother. The Hephthalites may have also helped the Sasanians eliminate another Hunnic tribe, the Kidarites. By 467, Peraz I, with Hephthalite aid, reportedly managed to capture Balaam and put an end to Kidarite rule in Transoxiana once and for all. The Kidarites, weakened, had to take refuge in the area of Gandhara. Later however, Peraz I fought three wars with his former allies the Hephthalites. In the first two he was captured and ransomed himself. In the third, at the Battle of Herat 484, he was killed, and for the next two years the Hephthalites plundered parts of Persia, with the Sasanian Empire paying tribute to the Hephthalites. From 474, the Hephthalites themselves adopted the winged, triple crescent crown of Peraz I to crown their effigy in their own coinage. They thus expressed symbolically that they had become the legitimate rulers of Iran. 
Support of Kava I from 484 until the middle of the 6th century, Persia paid tribute to the Hephthalites. In 488, Kava I made himself king of Persia with Hephthalite help, he overthrew his uncle, the brother of Paraz. In 496 to 498, he was overthrown by the nobles and clergy, escaped and restored himself with a Hephthalite army. Hephthalite troops helped Kava at a siege of Edessa. Topic: <laughs> 6th century and later. The period C 498 to 555 is almost blank in the standard English sources. In 552, the Gokturks took over Mongolia, and by 558 reached the Volga. By 581 or before, the western part separated and became the western Turkic Khaganate. Circa 555–567, the Turks and the Persians allied against the Hephthalites and defeated them after an eight-day battle near Karshi, the Battle of Bukhara, perhaps in 557. The Allies then fought each other and c. 571 drew a border along the Oxus. After the battle, the Hephthalites withdrew to Bactria and replaced King Gatfar with Faganish, the ruler of Chaganian. What happened in the Tarim Basin is not clear. <inaudible> <inaudible> invasion of the Sassanid Empire 7th century. Circa 600, the Hephthalites were raiding the Sasanian Empire as far as Spahan in central Iran. The Hephthalites issued numerous coins imitating the coinage of Khos Rao II, adding on the obverse a Hephthalite signature in Sogdian and Tamga symbol. In ca. 606–607, Khos Rao recalled Esembat IV Bagratuni from Persian Armenia and sent him to Iran to repel the Hephthalites. Esembat, with the aid of a Persian prince named Datoyin, repelled the Hephthalites from Persia, and plundered their domains in eastern Khorasan, where Esembat is said to have killed their king in single combat. Khosrau then gave Esembat the honorific title Khosrau Shun, the joy or satisfaction of Khosrau, while his son Veristarats II Bagratuni received the honorific name Javadian Khosrau, eternal Khosrau. Small Hephthalite states remained, paying tribute either to the Turks or the Persians. They are reported in the Zarifshan Valley, Chaganian, Kuttal, Termez, Balkh, Bajhiz, Herat, and Kabul. Circa 651, during the Arab conquest, the ruler of Bajhiz was involved in the fall of the last Sasanian Shah Yazdegerd III. Circa 705, the Hephthalite rulers of Bajhiz and Chaganian surrendered to the Arabs under Qutaba ibn Muslim. Ethnonyms <inaudible> 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 The name Hephthalites originated with ancient Greek sources, which also referred to them as Ephthalite, Abdel or Avdel. To the Armenians, the Hephthalites were Hydel, to the Persians and Arabs, they were Hadel or Hyadila, Hyah while their Bactrian name was Ebedalo, Ebedalo in Chinese chronicles, the Hephthalites are usually called Yi Ta I Li to or Yediyiladuo, or the more usual modern and abbreviated form Yada, yi da yada. The latter name has been given various Latinized renderings, including Yeda, Yi Ta, Yi Da, Yi Da and Yanda. The corresponding Cantonese and Korean names Yipdat and Yiopdal Korean, Yeobdal which preserve aspects of the Middle Chinese pronunciation roughly Yep Dot, Japed better than the modern Mandarin pronunciation, are more consistent with the Greek Hephthalite. Some Chinese chroniclers suggest that the root Heptha as in Yi Ta I Li to or Yada was technically a title equivalent to Emperor. While Wa was the name of the dominant tribe, in ancient India, names such as Hephthalite were unknown. The Hephthalites were apparently part of, or offshoots of, people known in India as Hunas or Tarushkas, although these names may have referred to broader groups or neighbouring peoples. <laughs> <laughs> Ethnicity There are several theories regarding the origins of the White Huns, with the Iranian and Turkic theories being the most prominent. According to most specialist scholars, the spoken language of the Hephthalites was an Eastern Iranian language, but different from the Bactrian language written in the Greek alphabet that was used as their official language and minted on coins, as was done under the preceding Kushan Empire. According to Xavier Tremblay, one of the Hephthalite rulers was named Kingila, 
which has the same root as the Sogdian word xn gamma r and the Waki word zigar, meaning sword. The name Mahirakula is thought to be derived from Mithra Kula, which is Iranian for the sun family, with Kula having the same root as Pashto Kul. Family. Taramana, Mahirakula's father, is also considered to have an Iranian origin. In Sanskrit, Mahira Kula would mean the Kul family of Mahira son, although Mahira is not purely Sanskrit but is a borrowing from Middle Iranian Mihr. Janos Harmata gives the translation, Mithra's begotten, and also supports the Iranian theory. For many years, however, scholars suggested that they were of Turkic stock. Some have claimed that some groups amongst the Hephthalites were Turkic speakers. Today the Hephthalites are generally held to have been an Eastern Iranian people speaking an East Iranian language. The Hephthalites inscribed their coins in the Bactrian Iranian script, held Iranian titles, the names of Hephthalite rulers given in Ferdowsi's Shahnameh are Iranian, and gem inscriptions and other evidence shows that the official language of the Hephthalite elite was East Iranian. In 1959, Kazuo Inoki proposed that the Hephthalites were probably Indo-European Iranians as some sources indicated that they were originally from Bactria, which is known to have been inhabited by Indo-Iranian people in antiquity. Richard Fry is cautiously accepting of Inoki's hypothesis, while at the same time stressing that the Hephthalites were probably a mixed horde. More recently Xavier Tremblay's detailed examination of surviving Hephthalite personal names has indicated that Enoki's hypothesis that they were East Iranian may well be correct, but the matter remains unresolved in academic circles. According to the Encyclopedia Iranica and Encyclopedia of Islam, the Hephthalites possibly originated in what is today Afghanistan. They apparently had no direct connection with the European Huns, but may have been causally related with their movement. The tribes in question deliberately called themselves Huns in order to frighten their enemies. Some white Huns may have been a prominent tribe or clan of the Chianites. According to Richard Nelson Fry, just as later nomadic empires were confederations of many peoples, we may tentatively propose that the ruling groups of these invaders were, or at least included, Turkic speaking tribesmen from the east and north. Although most probably the bulk of the people in the confederation of Chianites and then Heftalites spoke an Iranian language, this was the last time in the history of Central Asia that Iranian-speaking nomads played any role, hereafter all nomads would speak Turkic languages. The 6th century Byzantine historian Procopius of Caesarea book ICH. 3, related them to the Huns in Europe. The Ephthalati Huns, who are called White Huns. The Ephthalati are of the stock of the Huns in fact as well as in name, however they do not mingle with any of the Huns known to us, for they occupy a land neither adjoining nor even very near to them, but their territory lies immediately to the north of Persia. Closing square bracket. They are not nomads like the other Hunnic peoples, but for a long period have been established in a goodly land. They are the only ones among the Huns who have white bodies and countenances which are not ugly. It is also true that their manner of living is unlike that of their kinsmen, nor do they live a savage life as they do, but they are ruled by one king, and since they possess a lawful constitution, they observe right and justice in their dealings both with one another and with their neighbors, in no degree less than the Romans and the Persians. As an illustration of how little we know of the Hephthalites, Kurbanov surveyed the literature and found these opinions, they were named after a king Ephthalan or Heftal. They lived in the Eftali Valley location not given. They called themselves War or Jabula or Alkan. They were a political rather than ethnic unit. They, the Zeonites and Kidarites were the same people or three different peoples. They were the ruling class of the Zeonites. They were not Zeonites. They were not the White Huns. They were natives of Bactria, or the Pamirs, or the Kundu Kush. They began as the Wa who were subjects of the Roran in the Turfan area. They were a branch of the Uji in the Altai area who merged with the Dinglings, defeated the Uban and moved south. They arose near the Aral Sea from a fusion of Masajtay and Alans and moved southeast under the name of Zeonites. They were partly Tibetan or Mongol or Tokarian or Huns who returned east after the fall of Attila. Kurbanov gives a few other theories and makes no attempt to reconcile them. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins Ancient Chinese chroniclers, as well as Procopius, wrote various theories about the origins of the people. 
They were descendants of the Yuji or Tocharian tribes who remained behind after the rest of the people fled the Xiongnu. They were descendants of the Kongju. They were a branch of the TLA, or they were a branch of the UAR. Older Chinese sources c. 125 refer to them as Wa, Wa, Wa or Hudan, and describe the Hephthalites as a tribe living beyond the Great Wall, in Zungaria. Chinese chronicles state that they were originally a tribe of the Yuji, living to the north of the Great Wall, and subject to the Roran, Jewen, Jewen, as were some Turkic peoples at the time. Their original name was Wa or Wa Tun, subsequently they named themselves Yi De I Li to, Yan Dai Yi Li Tuo or more briefly Yi De Yi Da, after their royal family, which descended from one of the five Yuji families which also included the Kushan. The Hephthalite was a vassal state to the Roran Khaganate until the beginning of the 5th century. Between Hephthalites and Rurans were also close contacts, although they had different languages and cultures, and Hephthalites borrowed much of their political organization from Rurans. In particular, the title, Khan, which according to McGovern was original to the Rurans, was borrowed by the Hephthalite rulers. The reason for the migration of the Hephthalites southeast was to avoid a pressure of the Rurans. Further, the Hephthalites defeated the Uji in Bactria and their leader Kadara led the Uji to the south. <laughs> Religion and culture They were said to practice polyandry and artificial cranial deformation. Chinese sources said they worshipped foreign gods, demons, the heaven god or the fire god. The Gokturks told the Byzantines that they had walled cities. Some Chinese sources said that they had no cities and lived in tents. Litvinsky tries to resolve this by saying that they were nomads who moved into the cities they had conquered. There were some government officials but central control was weak and local dynasties paid tribute, according to Song Yun, the Chinese Buddhist monk who visited the Hephthalite territory in 540 and "...provides accurate accounts of the people, their clothing, the empresses and court procedures and traditions of the people and he states the Hephthalites did not recognize the Buddhist religion and they preached pseudo-gods, and killed animals for their meat." It is reported that some Hephthalites often destroyed Buddhist monasteries but these were rebuilt by others. According to Xuanzang, the third Chinese pilgrim who visited the same areas as Song Yun about 100 years later, the capital of Chaganian had five monasteries, according to historian Andre Wink. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 in the Hephthalite dominion Buddhism was predominant but there was also a religious sediment of Zoroastrianism and Manichaeism. Balkh had some 100 Buddhist monasteries and 30,000 monks. Outside the town was a large Buddhist monastery, later known as Nabahar. <laughs> White Huns in southern Central Asia It is not clear whether the people called Sveta Huna White Huns in Sanskrit were the Hephthalites or a related people, the Zeonites. In the northwest of the Indian subcontinent, the Hephthalites were not distinguished from their immediate Chianite predecessors, both are known as Huna Sanskrit, Sveta Huna, White Huns. In ancient India, names such as Hephthalite were unknown. The Hephthalites were apparently part of, or offshoots of, people known in India as Hunas or Tarushkas. Historians such as Beckwith, referring to Etienne de la Vicière, say that the Hephthalites were not necessarily one and the same as the White Huns. Sveta Huna. According to de la Vicière, the Hephthalites are not directly identified in classical sources alongside that of the White Huns. The Huna had already established themselves in Afghanistan and the modern province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa of Pakistan by the first half of the 5th century, and the Gupta Emperor Skandagupta had repelled a Huna invasion in 455 before the Hephthalite clan came along. These attacks on the Guptas were therefore probably made by the predecessors of the Hephthalites, the Kitarites. India was invaded during the 5th century by a people known in the Indian subcontinent as the Hunas, including the Alchon Huns and possibly an alliance broader than the Hephthalites and or Zeonites. The Hunas were initially defeated by Emperor Skandagupta of the Gupta Empire. By the end of the 5th century, however, the Hunas had overrun the part of the Gupta Empire that was to their southeast and had conquered central and north India. Gupta Emperor Banugupta defeated the Hunas under Taramana in 510. 
The Hunas were driven out of India by the kings Yasodharman and Narasimhagupta. During the early 6th century, the Hephthalites had their capital at Badian, modern Kunduz, but the emperor lived in the capital city for just three winter months, and for the rest of the year, the government seat would move from one locality to another like a camp. The Hephthalites continued the pressure on ancient India's northwest frontier and broke east by the end of the 5th century, hastening the disintegration of the Gupta Empire. They made their capital at the city of Sakala, modern Sialkot in Pakistan, under their emperor Mihirakula. But later the Huns were defeated and driven out of India by the Indian kings Yasodharman and Narasimhagupta in the 6th century. Possible descendants A number of groups in Afghanistan and India may be partly descended from the Hephthalites. Karluks, the Karluks or Karlujids reported from near Ghazni in the 13th century may have arisen from the Hephthalites. Others say they were Kalaks, the names being similar in Arabic. Kalaks, the Kalaks or Kalaj people are first mentioned in the 7th-9th centuries in the area of Kabul and Ghazni. They spoke Turkic, possibly arose from the Hephthalites and later probably merged into the Gilzai Pashtuns. Their descendants may have founded the Khalji dynasty 1290 and the Lodai dynasty 1451 of the Delhi Sultanate. Abdal is a name associated with the Hephthalites. It is an alternate name for the Ainu people of the Tarim Basin and appears as a sub-tribe of the Chowder Turkmen, Kazakhs and Volga Bulgars. Durrani, the Durrani of Afghanistan were called Abdali before 1747. Rajputs, the Rajputs may have begun as assimilation of Hephthalites in Indian society. The Pashtuns began as a union of largely East Iranian tribes, which became the initial ethnic stratum of the Pashtun ethnogenesis, dates from the middle of the first millennium CE and is connected with the dissolution of the Ephthalite White Huns Confederacy. Of the contribution of the Ephthalites White Huns to the ethnogenesis of the Pashtuns we find evidence in the ethnonym of the largest of the Pashtun tribe unions, the Abdali Durrani after 1747 associated with the ethnic name of the Ephthalites — Abdal. The Saya Pash the Kafirs Nuristanis of the Hindu Kush, called all Pashtuns by a general name of Abdal still at the beginning of the 19th century. See also Huna people Kitarites Red Huns Alchon Huns Kushan Empire Zeonites Nezik Huns Iranian Huns <laughs>